This is a trickier question than it may look at first glance, so the best way of approaching it uh, is to consider two separate situations, the small mass and the large mass. So let's uh, begin with the large mass. Now let's draw a free body force diagram for that. So here's the mass. And the weight of that is acting down and acting in the other direction is uh, an unknown force of tension in the rope, which we will find out later. So we can, uh, let's assume that the acceleration uh, of this one is going down. If we're going to assume that the little m is going to go up the slope, then it, it suggests that big M is going to come down. So let's put our acceleration going down like this. In which case we can say, uh, that our net force, which is big M multiplied by A, equals mg, the weight, take away the tension T. So if there was no uh, acceleration at all, then mg in this instance would, would equal uh, T. Okay, so let's call that uh, equation 1. We will be coming back to that a few times. Now let's have a look at our small mass, which is acting up the, the slope. It's sitting on the slope like this. It has a force acting up the slope, which again is our tension T. And the force acting down the slope here is the component of the object's weight, mg acting parallel to the slope. So that will be mg sine alpha. Okay, so now let's form another equation for that. Remember, let's, we're assuming the, the object is accelerating uh, up the slope, so let's draw that here as well. So we can form an equation now where our net force acting on the small mass m a is equal to our tension T take away mg sine alpha okay and let's rearrange that for T let's make things simpler in a second so T equals m a plus m g sine alpha. And we're going to call this one equation 2. The first thing we need to find out is the acceleration a. So we've got our two simultaneous equations. Let's put simultaneous equation 2 into 1 to give us m a equals m g take away and then we have m a plus m g sine alpha grouping our a's onto one side of the equation that will give us big m a plus little m a equals big m g take away little m g sine alpha. So we can then solve this for a to give us a equals big M g take away little m g sine alpha divided by m plus m. And that is our that is the answer to the first part of the question. We've found out the acceleration a. Um, what we should do as well, let's label this one uh, equation three because we will require that in a moment. Fred, the math isn't quite over yet. We need to now find t. So to do this, we're going to put equation three into equation two, which will allow us to begin with t equals m. Substituting for a here from equation three, big M g take away m g sine alpha all 
divided by big M plus little m. And then the second part of that equation from, from equation 2 is plus m g sine alpha. Now that equation is a tremendous mess. So one way we can tidy it up is so that we have uh, a common denominator running right through. So to do that we can multiply just our mg sine alpha term by m plus m divided by m plus m. Okay, that's the same as multiplying by 1. There's no, it, does, it does nothing to the, uh, to the equation. We're allowed to do that, but it just means that we now can work with a common denominator throughout our equation there of m plus m, big M plus little m. Let's begin our tidying up process here by uh, pulling little mg outside of the brackets. So we have little mg multiplied by big M, take away little m, we're going to leave that little m in there because it was there already, we get rid of the g sine alpha. So continuing our factorization with the other side but also at the same time let's expand out that m plus m bracket so we're going to get plus, we've pulled out the mg, so big m sine alpha plus little m sine alpha. Let's close our bracket and remember we're dividing the whole lot by m plus m. Now a couple of our terms here can cancel so we can get rid of uh, little m sine alpha and little m sine alpha there because one is taken away, one is adding, uh, which allows us to simplify this finally to t equals little m g big M 1 minus sine alpha divided by big M plus little m and uh, I'm afraid that's as pretty much as simple as we can get that term. Before we move on to the final part of the question let's label that equation 4. We're nearly there. The final part of this question is what are the conditions for equilibrium? So when when we're in equilibrium, our acceleration equals zero. So we can say that rearranging equation one there, we can say that mg equals t. Excellent. And we know what t is, so we can say that mg, that's big M G equals little m g big M one minus sine alpha divided by big M plus little m. Straight away we can cancel some terms here and get rid of big M, we can get rid of g on both sides which leaves us with 1 equals little m 1 minus sine alpha over big M plus little m so we can then say big M plus little m equals m, take away, we're expanding out these brackets, m sine alpha. And again, we can cancel some terms here. Let's subtract m from both sides. That's little m, sorry, from both sides. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of that. Which finally allows us to write this as big M divided by little m equals minus sine alpha. So if the objects are in equilibrium, if they are not moving, then the ratio of big mass to little mass must be equal to the sine of the angle of the slope.